Okay, welcome back. We're continuing with parallelograms. Today we are going to talk about theorems two and three. Okay, two and three, moving on. Parallelogram, as we know, is a quad with two pairs, excuse me, opposite sides parallel. And again, this worksheet is attached to your school loop. Uh, print it off if you want. If not, you can draw the pictures down on your sheet of paper. Supplementary means uh, angles whose sum is equal to 180 degrees. We're going to use that today. Congruent, same shape and size. And then the theorem is uh, something that's been proven, right? Math fact that has been proved. Okay, those are our definitions. Some are repeats, some are new. So theorem two says if a quadrilateral is a parallelogram, then, and you'll notice that it's always the same statement at the beginning. It's an if-then statement. If a quadrilateral is a parallelogram, then opposite angles are congruent. Again, I am fluent in math language. I recommend that you become fluent in math language because it makes me life a lot easier. Opposite angles are congruent. I'm going to slide it up a little bit. So if I label my quadrilateral A, B, C, D, I'm going to say opposite angles. So A and C are congruent. So A is congruent to C. B is congruent to D. And one thing you can look at, you can look at and see that this angle, A, is an obtuse angle, and C is an obtuse angle. If they're both obtuse, if they're both obtuse, then they have to equal each other. Likewise, D is acute, B is acute, they have to equal each other. So let's move down to some examples and solve some examples with this information. So we look here and it says solve for x. Well, first I need to figure it out. I need to look and I need to say, all right, 7x plus 5, that is an angle F. 6x plus 12, that is angle D. They are opposite of each other. Okay, so opposite angles are congruent. They're both acute. We set them equal to each other. 7x plus 5 is equal to 6x plus 12. 12. Okay, now we're going to solve for x. Subtract 6x from both sides. You get x plus 5 equals 12. Subtract 5. You get 7 is equal to x. It asked us to solve for x. We just did. We are done. In the next example, it's a little bit more in depth, like it was uh, what yesterday's notes. It says find the measurement of angle R. So again, I have to figure out that I'm using theorem two that says opposite angles are congruent. So I know that angle R is 40X minus two, and that's equal to 39X plus one. And now I'm gonna solve for X. Subtract 39X, you get X minus two is equal to one. Add two to both sides you get x equals 3. So we found out that x equals 3, but that's not what the problem asks. The problem asks for the measurement of angle r. So I'm going to take my 3, and I'm going to plug it into 40 times 3 minus 2. 40 times 3 is 120, minus 2 is 118 degrees. Now, 118 degrees here, I look back at the angle, I notice that it is obtuse, and 118 degrees is greater than 90, so I know that I'm correct, or close to correct. Okay, let's look at theorem three. Theorem three says, if a quadrilateral is a parallelogram, then I'm gonna say adjacent 
angles are supplementary. Okay, so we'll go back here. We'll go A and B and C and D. And I'll even put my markings in, one and two and one and two. And I'm going to say that my adjacent angles, so A and B are adjacent and they are supplementary. B and C are adjacent and they are supplementary. C and D are next to each other and they are supplementary. And D and A are adjacent to each other. They are supplementary. Those are your four equations that you're going to use if you ever have theorem three. So let's put that into practice right now. We have 110 degrees here. We have 71x minus 1 there. They are adjacent, kind of like C and D. So I would use this equation. So I would go 110 plus 71x minus 1 equals 180. 110 minus 1, so I have 71x plus 109 is equal to 180. Minus 109, you get 71 is equal to 71x divided by 71. Cancel out, you get x is equal to 1. It asked us to solve for x. We did. Because they are adjacent and they are supplementary. The last one, again, another one that has a few more steps, not tricky, just one more step. It says find the measurement of angle Y. So I want to find the measurement of that angle. I first have to start off with solving for X. So I know 10 X minus eight is adjacent angle. Y is adjacent to angle X. So I know that when I add them together, they have to equal 180. Sorry, I ran out of the box right there. I'll fix that in a moment. Now I'm going to solve this by combining like terms. I have my 10x and my 8x, so I get 18x. I have a negative 8 and a positive 8 there, and they cancel each other out. So I have 18x is equal to 180. Divide by 18, divide by 18, and you get x is equal to 10. I've solved for x, but now I need to take that and substitute it back in for my angle. So 10x, 10 times 10, minus 8, and this is angle y, right? Angle y is equal to this, 10x minus 8, and that would be 100 minus 8, which would be 92 degrees. Okay? There is a way to check your work on this one. You can substitute it into the 8 plus 8x as well. So 8 plus and then 8 times 10 would be 80. So 88 plus 88, excuse me, 8 plus 80, which gives us 88. And then if you were to add 92 plus 88, you would get 180 if you combined them. Okay, and that's the way to check your work to make sure that you are correct. Please take a moment, watch this. If you need to watch this video again, by all means do so. Uh, like yesterday, I'm gonna give you six problems so that you can practice, and here they are. We're using theorems two and three, which you just wrote down. Again, state the theorem you used and solve for X on the top four. On the bottom two, it says state the theorem used and find the measurement indicated in each parallelogram. The previous examples are very similar to this. They should help you out. I will see you tomorrow in class. Have a good night.